Lost is a subpar healer who only knows how to use one basic heal spell, and because of this he gets kicked out of his party and is called an ignorant loser by the people around him. One day in the guild, a girl asks Lost to form a party with him, and this is so surprising that everyone in the guild goes from minding their own business to a state of utter disbelief. Even Lost can't understand why she would want to form a party with him. But the girl points out that he is holding a party recruitment sign, so he is clearly looking for party members. The girl's name is Narcina, and she introduces herself as a martial artist in need of a party member, but before she can get Lost to agree to team up with her, the guild receptionist runs up and interrupts her. The receptionist's name is Amherst, and she takes Narsena by the shoulders just to tell her how much of a bum Lost is. Lost is a healer, but he is only capable of using the basic heal spell despite having been an adventurer since he was a child. He can't use area heal or any high healing magic. So everyone has branded him as an incompetent fool however despite all this until recently, there was a party called Blade of Lightning that took him in as a member, but Lost sucked at his job so much that he eventually got kicked out. And because he is seen as a failure. No one wants to team up with him anymore. Amherst encourages Narsena to ignore Loss because he's so ignorant that she won't be able to make any profit, but Narsena actually has a lot of money on hand so she isn't worried about profits right now. To prove it, Narsena pulls out her bag full of money to show Amherst, and she has clearly never been to Detroit because she would have gotten mugged almost instantly. Amherst warns Narsena that the adventurers here aren't exactly law-abiding citizens, so she should be careful about flashing so much cash like that. Narsena thanks Amherst for the advice and says she will keep it in mind, but from the way she responded, it doesn't look like Narsena really understood what Amherst was talking about. Amherst assumes Narsena must be a new adventurer, so she offers to help set her up with some newbie-friendly adventurers so she can make it through the day without getting robbed, but of course, she'll be charging a small fee for her services. Narsena appreciates the offer, but she already decided a long time ago that Loss was the only person she would form a party with, so she's going to stick with him. Amher still doesn't think it's a good idea, but since Marcena is so insistent, she begins the paperwork for their party formation. Marcena asks what the paper is for, so Amherst explains that they need to fill out the registration form to officially be recognized as a guild. Lovs fills out his portion of the paperwork, and once he's done, he asks Marcena to write her name on it. Marcena was busy staring at Lovs, so she was caught off guard when he asked her to write her name, but she still does it, and after Lovs pays Amherst her commission fee, his and Narsena's party has officially been formed. They leave the guild together, and Loss begins talking to Narsena about the Mardat Labyrinth, since that's where they are headed. Apparently, no one has actually finished exploring the end of the Mardat Labyrinth, so there's no information on what kind of monster the Labyrinth Master is or how deep the Labyrinth goes. Naturally, adventurers began to take up the challenge and explore the Labyrinth in hopes of receiving large rewards, and the resulting influx of people led to the formation and growth of Mardat, the largest labyrinth city in the world. Marcena is happy to learn all about the labyrinth, but she asks if it is really alright for them to be heading into it so soon. Before they left the guild, Amherst was adamant that Lofs shouldn't take her into the labyrinth because Marcena is still a newbie, and Lofs definitely remembers her advice, but he's choosing to ignore it. Due to the amount of magical energy that leaks out from the labyrinth, monsters are able to spawn in different locations around the city. These locations are classified as the mountains, the forest, the wetlands, and the plains, but among them all, the plains are by far the safest since only weak monsters spawn there. Normally, a beginner adventurer would start by practicing in the plains so they can get a feel for combat, but it's such a large area that it's pretty difficult to find monsters to fight there. In contrast, monsters appear by the dozens in the labyrinth, and as long as you don't go too deep, you won't run into any particularly strong monsters, so Lost figures it will be a lot quicker for Narsena to gain experience there. Narsena agrees with Lost, so they both continue to the labyrinth entrance. But before they go in, Narsena is eager to contribute to the party, so she says she will lead the way since combatants are supposed to be the vanguard. Lost doesn't usually stand back when he goes into the labyrinth, but since Narsena is so happy about being the vanguard, he decides to just let her have her fun. Although, as they walk through the dungeon halls, he starts having his doubts because he doesn't know if Narsena is actually capable of fighting or not. Okay, never mind, Narsena knows how to box, and she's putting in work against a group of goblins she ran into. She defeats them all with relative ease, and Loss is really impressed with the amount of skill she possesses. The defeated goblins soon turn to dust, and in their place, a magic stone is left, so Loss picks it up and explains to Narsena that adventurers give these stones to the guild and receive money in exchange. Narsena asks what the guild uses the stones for, so Lofs tells her that the stones have magical energy stored in them, so they can be used in all manners of tools and equipment. That much should be common knowledge to her as an adventurer, but Narsena was never much of a learner. 
They've got five stones in total, and although goblin magic stones aren't worth much, they will still be able to get enough money from these to cover lodging for the night. They could call it a day and head back to town, or they could go a little deeper into the labyrinth to get some more money. And Marcena is happy fun, so she says she wants to keep going. They head deeper into the labyrinth, but at a certain point, Las grabs Marcena and pulls her back because there's danger ahead. At first, she's confused because she didn't notice anything off, but Las grabs a rock and places it on the tile in front of her, and it activates a pit trap which would have totally killed her if Lost hadn't intervened. Marcena is amazed and asks Lost how he spotted the trap, so Lost explains that the trap tile was a different shade of grey from the others, so he figured something must be wrong. Marcena is glad Lost was able to notice it, but trap identification is meant to be the job of the thief, so how come Lost is so good at it when he's a healer? Lost just tells her that he has been an adventurer for a long time, so he has picked up a bunch of skills over the years. They continue to move forward, but soon enough they come across an orc roaming the halls and Lost is surprised by this since orcs are mid-level monsters, so they aren't meant to appear so high up in the labyrinth. Marcena asks if they should turn and run away, but Lost doesn't think that will be necessary because his and Marcena's combined strength should be enough to take it down, but he isn't going to force her to do anything she doesn't want to. Marcena says she is fine with it since Lost believes they can win, so they get in position and Marcena charges at it, but when she lands her first kick, it feels more like she's kicking a rock than a monster. The orc raises its club and tries to strike her down, but Narsena is able to block it with her hands although she gets backed into a corner because of it and has nowhere to run as the orc prepares for another attack. However, moments before she is struck down, Lost steps in front of her and defeats the orc with a single stab of his sword. He asks Narsena if she's alright and she's both amazed and grateful that he was able to save her, but she also wonders how he just did that when he's meant to be a healer. Lost says he just happened to pick up a few combat skills over his years of being an adventurer, but that aside, they still need to collect magic stone, so they go to retrieve it. And it's a lot bigger than the ones they got from the goblins. It also has more magic in it, so they will get a lot more money if they sell it. With that said, Lost asks her if she wants to call it a day and head back to the guild since they've earned enough money. And she has demonstrated her skills, but Narsena says she wants to keep going a little longer, so Lost ends up agreeing. By the end of their labyrinth exploration, they've gathered a lot of magic stones and returned to the guild to exchange them with Amherst. Amherst is surprised that they managed to get this many gems in only half a day, but then she notices the orc gem and begins scolding Lost for taking Narsena into the labyrinth when she specifically told him not to. It was really reckless of him to take her to the mid-level floors where she is just a beginner, but Lost says he didn't actually take Narsena to the deep floors, they were on the beginner level the entire time, and he only intended for them to fight goblins. But there was an orc roaming on the upper floors for some reason. Marcena confirms that Lost is telling the truth, so Amherst believes him and his story isn't too far-fetched anyway, since there have been a lot of similar reports of high-level monsters showing up in beginner areas. Amherst isn't sure what's going on, but she knows it must mean something bad is going on down in the labyrinth. Although she doesn't get paid enough here to really care. Anyway, she asks if Lost is here to sell all these gems, and Lost says he is, so Amherst excitedly begins gathering the payment for him. Narsena notices that Amherst is a little too happy to be buying magic gems, so Lost explains that as guild staff, when Amherst buys magic gems from the adventurers she manages, she gets a fat commission on the sale. Once the money is ready, Lost is shocked to see just how much there actually is, but Amherst reminds him that half of that belongs to Narsena. Lost is aware that he only gets half, but even half is ten times more than what he usually got paid when he was part of Lightning Blade, and that's when he realizes that he was scammed by Lightning Blade. Amherst kind of finds the whole thing funny, but Narsena reminds her that it's the guild's job to arbitrate when there are pay disputes, so Amherst says she will help Lost get his money back if he wants her to. He thinks about it for a second, but he eventually decides not to bother getting his money back since he has already formed a new party, and he wants nothing to do with Lightning Blade anymore. After Lost leaves, the guild branch manager comes out, and while Amherst is busy counting her money, Handsome goes up to her and asks if Lost was just here, and if so, he hopes she didn't refer him to any parties. Amherst says she obviously didn't refer that idiot to any parties, but there was one girl who specifically wanted to form a party with him, so there was nothing she could do about it. At the same time, Lost and Narsena arrive at an inn, and Lost is welcomed by the innkeeper's daughter. She asks if Narsena is the girl who recently joined his party, and Lost confirms it, but he wonders how she knew about it already. The girl tells him that the news has been getting around since no one ever expected him to be able to form a party, but that aside, she asks if he is her to have something to eat. 
Lost would love some food, but first, he says, he wants to reserve a room, so he goes to talk to the little girl's mother. Mary would be happy to get them a room, so she asks if they will be sleeping together or in separate rooms. Narsena blushes a little at the thought, but Lost tells Mary that they will be staying in separate rooms, although Narsena actually kind of liked the idea of sharing a bed with Lost. A little while later, Lost and Narsena go to bed, and once Narsena is alone in her room, she begins thinking about the first time she met Lost several years earlier. He had just saved her from an accident and was healing her wound with his basic heal spell, so she was really grateful that he took the time to heal her. So she decided right then and there that she would become an adventurer when she grew up and support Lofts in any way she could. Since that day, Narsena began training relentlessly. And as soon as she heard that Lost had been banished from his party, she rushed over to the capital so she could be the first to team up with him. However, she is just now realizing that Lost probably didn't recognize her at all. Although it's hard to blame him since she did grow a lot taller than she was back then, she was wearing different clothes and her hair color even changed to blue. And even though she came here to help him, it turns out that Loss is so talented that he doesn't actually need her protection, but regardless of whether he recognizes her or not, Narsena intends to continue to support him no matter what. Still, she can't help but wonder why people in this city call him an idiot, even though he is so strong. Back when Loss was still a part of Lightning Blade, the party was up against a Hydra and one party member has already been injured by it, so it was Loss's job to heal her while the party leader held off the monster. Unfortunately, while Lost was able to heal the physical injury, the woman was also poisoned, so she asked if Lost could deal with the poison as well. Lost apologizes and tells her he can't actually get rid of the poison, so the woman gets pissed, because that means she has to recover by herself. The leader asks her to stop complaining and get back into the fight already because he can't keep the Hydra busy forever, but with the poison still in her system, the woman is in no condition to fight. The leader asks Loss to get her back in shape, but Loss says he can't do it, and that they should have brought an antidote potion with them. The leader argues that he didn't buy one because antidotes are expensive, and that's supposed to be Loss's job as a healer. Since Loss and Siberia aren't going to get much help for now, the leader turns to the mage and asks her to do something to help him because he can't handle the Hydra by himself. So Armia tries using a flame spell, but it does absolutely nothing against the Hydra, so she gets scared and drops her staff. Margulis has given up on his party's incompetence, so he turns around and orders everyone to retreat immediately. Since Margulis gave up, Armia breaks down and runs away as well, followed by Loss and Siberia, who still can't walk, so Loss is helping her. However, as they are leaving, the Hydra keeps a close eye on Loss for some reason. Once they got back to the guild, Margulis took great joy in telling Loss that he was being kicked out of the Lightning Blade party, and he justifies his decision by saying it's Lost's fault that they couldn't defeat the Hydra, although Lost doesn't think he's the only one to blame since both Margulis and Siberia were so excited to battle the Hydra that they stayed up all night and went into the fight sleep deprived. The two of them refuse to accept any accountability for the failure, so they both look to Armia and tell her to decide who is at fault. Armia doesn't want to put the blame solely on Lost, but she also performed terribly during that battle, so she doesn't want Margulis targeting her instead for being useless and thus she decides to throw Lost under the bus. Lost soon wakes up from his dream, and he realizes that he must still be bothered by what happened to him that day. Back before Lost joined Lightning Blade, he was already known as an idiot healer by everyone in town, although he still dreamed of becoming a first-rate adventurer. So when a party reached out to him with a position, Lost was overjoyed and jumped at the opportunity. However, once they were in a labyrinth, Lofts soon found out that they hadn't hired him because they wanted a healer, they hired him because they wanted a human sacrifice to distract the monsters. Lofts was tossed out and forced to run for his life while his so-called party members at the time tried to walk past him without a care in the world, but all of a sudden, the monsters turned their attention away from Lofts and began attacking the other party members instead, leading into a total massacre. In the end, Lost was the only one who managed to survive, and while he knows it is normal for a weak commoner like him to be treated this way, he still wished that someone would acknowledge him as a real adventurer. Just then, as he was walking home, he came across a carriage that had been attacked by some goblins, and normally he wouldn't care enough to put himself in danger by helping, but he saw how scared the little girl looked, so he threw caution to the wind and ran down to defend her even though he was just a useless healer. He did his best to fight off the goblins, but he still sucked at combat back then, so in a matter of minutes, Bro got knocked out by a club to the back of the head. Lost fully expected to die that day, but he eventually wakes up and finds the little girl standing over him. He wonders how he could possibly still be alive, but then he looks over and notices that the Knight's Order had shown up and defeated all the goblins. He went through all the effort of trying to act heroic, but in the end, it looks like he is still an absolute idiot no matter what he does. 
However, despite the fact that he didn't do much, the girl still thanks him because his actions bought enough time for the knight's order to make it here and she thought it was really cool the way he jumped in to save her. Lost notices a scratch on the girl's arm, so he raises his hand to heal her injury and she is thankful for it. But Lost doesn't think he deserves any praise because low heal is the only thing he can actually do. The girl looks confused, so Lost tells her all about his weakness and how he was just tricked into going into the labyrinth just so he could be used as bait. And she feels sorry that he had to go through such a thing. So she stands up and declares that she will become an adventurer in the future and form a party with him so she can protect Lost. Soon enough, the girl left with a knight's order and by now, Lost had pieced together that she was the daughter of a noble family. So he never believed she would actually become an adventurer or that he would ever meet her again. But nevertheless, her words gave him courage. So he decided to continue doing his best to become a proper adventurer. He went on a journey and soon found himself a mentor. So under their instruction, he began his training arc and worked tirelessly for countless hours to improve himself. And while as a healer, he could still only use basic heal, he developed many other useful adventurer skills, so he was confident that he would no longer be a burden to anyone. And upon returning to pursue his adventurer dream, the first party he joined was Lightning Blade, but we all know how that turned out, don't we? Still, Lost is grateful to that girl, because if she hadn't said those kind words to him that day, probably would have quit being an adventurer once and for all that day. But it's not like he will ever get the chance to meet her again. And there's no way she would have actually become an adventurer like she said she would. Just then, Narsena knocks on his door, so Lost goes to answer it and she tells him she was thinking about going down to get some breakfast, so she wanted him to come with her, and he happily agrees. After breakfast, they head down into the labyrinth again, and this time they are going for some of the lower floors. As they enter, Narsena spots an inscription in the ground and it looks like it's a teleportation circle, although she has never seen one in person before. Lost explains that you don't find teleportation circles in every labyrinth, and this one was probably put here by magicians soon after the labyrinth was discovered, although he doesn't have much information about it. Narsena asks if they can use this to teleport to different locations, and that's technically correct, but there still needs to be a teleportation circle on the other side to exit from. That sounds really convenient, so Narsena wishes there was a teleportation circle installed in the city, so they didn't have to walk all the way out here. But the knowledge used to create these circles was lost hundreds of years ago, so there's no way to make new ones. They both step onto the teleportation circle, and after a bright flash, they appear on one of the lower floors. Lost tells Narsena that this is one of the mid-level floors, so the monsters here are going to be a lot stronger than the goblins she fought yesterday, and he wants her to be extra careful. Lost and Narsena begin fighting their way through the floor, but Narsena goes off on her own and tries to punch a lich, but Lost warns her against it. Liches are monsters made up of pure spirit energy, so physical attacks won't work on it. Lost suggests they fall back since they don't have anything that can damage the Lich, but Narsena says she actually has a trick up her sleeve that she may be able to work against it. Lost decides to trust her, so the two of them face off against the Lich, and Lost goes out in front to act as bait. He then starts running away, and as the Lich chases after him, he runs past Narsena who is preparing herself to take the Lich down. All people possess a form of spirit energy within them called prana, and as a martial artist, Marcena has training enough that she is able to control the prana within her body and use it as a weapon by covering her fists with it. This way, when she goes to attack the lich, she punches a hole straight through it, and it soon disintegrates like any other monster and drops its magic stone. Lost runs over to check on her, and she seems perfectly fine, aside from the wounds she got on her arm. Lost tells her to stay still for a second because he wants to try something, so he pulls out a magic item that enhances the effects of healing spells and uses it to heal Narsena's wounds. They head back to the guild together to show Amherst the stones and she is shocked that they managed to defeat a lich, but she is also excited for the commission she will get from this sale. Lofs and Narsena get a lot more money than they were expecting, so they are in a really good mood and start heading back to the inn, but along the way they run into a fight going on in the middle of the street. Things like this have been becoming more common over the years as more and more outlaws move into town to become adventurers, and they've been giving all the honest adventurers a bad name. It's a real mess, but there's nothing Lost or Narsena can do to change it, so Lost suggests that they should just enjoy their money and have a fancy dinner tonight. A little while later, Lost and Narsena are seated at their table and have been served one of Mary's best dishes to eat. While they eat, Narsena says she has a question she has been meaning to ask. So she points out to the giant stone pillar on the edge of town and asks what that thing is. At first, she thought it was a building, but it has no windows or doors, and it doesn't look like a monument either, so it's really confusing. Lost shares her confusion and explains that he doesn't know what it is either. 
He once got curious about it and asked one of the workers about it while it was still being constructed, but the workers didn't know what it was for or who was paying to have it built. Marcina can't believe something like that was possible. But apparently, an agent just showed up one day with some money and blueprints, so no one ever met the funder. Still, as strange as it may seem, Lost just chalks it up to some billionaire doing random shit, and he's perfectly fine with that since the towers aren't actually hurting anyone. But he also wishes some of that money could have gone towards building a wall for the city since it doesn't have one. Narsena agrees that a wall for the city would be nice, but at the same time she doesn't think there's much to worry about since with the number of adventurers that live in this city, whether it is monsters or thieves that attack, she's sure it'll be able to fight off any threats. After dinner, they both head back to their room, but before Lofs goes to bed for the night, Narsena calls him back. She clearly has something to say, but she can't bring herself to say it, so she just tells him good night and heads to bed. Inside her room, she jumps on her bed and is upset because she wanted to tell Lofs that she wants to stay in the same room as him, but she couldn't come out and say it because it was too embarrassing. In the other room, Lost is lying in bed with his mind at ease now that he has such a great party member. He was able to continue adventuring thanks to that little girl's motivation. And while he doesn't know if he will ever get to meet her again, he has a lot to thank Marcina for. In other news, Margulis has just found a new member for the Lightning Blade party, and while he seems really excited to have Lyra join the team, Siberia doesn't seem to like her very much and Armia is too shy to make direct eye contact. Anyway. Now that the team is complete again, Margulis is eager to head out and finally defeat that Hydra once and for all. The party heads back to the swamp to confront the Hydra and luckily the Hydra hasn't grown its head back yet, so they won't have to do as much work. Margulis quickly comes up with a plan of attack and says he and Leela will attack from the front, Armia will provide magic support and Siberia will sneak up from behind. He is just about ready to run out into the action, but Leela calls a timeout because there's no way she can be on the front line of an attack as a healer. Margulis is confused because Lofs always fought on the front lines with them and Leela can't believe they were forcing their former to fight out on the front lines but Lofs never seemed to mind. In fact, Siberian recalls that Lofs sometimes got some really good hits in and he was actually the one who cut one of the Hydra's heads off. Leela is in disbelief after hearing this but Margulis doesn't expect her to do something like that. If she says she can't fight on the front lines, he is fine with that, but to make sure, he asks her if she is capable of casting the detoxify spell to counter the Hydra's poison, and that's something she can actually do, so Margulis tells everyone to get into position to slay the Hydra today. Back in town, Loss and Arsena have just returned from their latest trip into the labyrinth, and Amherst is glad to see that they've brought more gems to sell to her. But she reminds Loss that he shouldn't push Marcena too far because she is still only a new adventurer. So Lost assures her that he is being very careful about the fights they get into. Amherst is glad to hear that they are being cautious, but there's still a limit to how much can be done with a party of two, so she suggests that Lost and Narsena should think about recruiting some new party members to make things easier for them. Lost agrees that more party members would make things easier, but ultimately, he decides that it isn't worth the hassle since he and Narsena are already making a lot of money as they are. Amherst admits that he's right since with the amount they've been making recently. They could probably rent a house instead of staying in an inn if they wanted to. Marcena had no idea it was possible to rent a house in the city, so Amherst explains that there's a limit to the amount of equipment and items that you can store at an inn, but that's not an issue when you have a private room, although it's quite expensive. But the real value shines when there's a male and female party, so the extra privacy allows for a lot of late night activity. Narsena suddenly seems really interested in renting a private house for some reason, but seeing as Lost did not react, Amherst doubts late night activity is a possibility in this case. Speaking of private houses, Lost recalls that Lightning Blade had a private house as well, although they forced him to sleep in the storage closet, so it wasn't very comfortable for him. Amherst laughs at how badly Lost was getting mistreated, but if it makes him feel better, she lets him know that he was actually pretty lucky to have been banished from Lightning Blade. Ever since he was kicked out, Margulis and the rest of Lightning Blade haven't been able to accomplish a single mission. Margulis can't understand why, but Leela can clearly tell that he is too dumb to realize he isn't strong enough to handle a Hydra head-on. Margulis hears her, so he is about to start yelling again, but Leela tells him to be quiet, otherwise she can't concentrate on helping Armia recover. Armia was badly injured and poisoned, so Leela really does need to concentrate, and while she is doing that, Siberia tells Margulis that as much as she hates to admit it, Lost may have been more valuable than they gave him credit for. Even though he sucked at healing, he was still able to get the job done in the end, and he also didn't notice that they were scamming him out of his money, so he was the perfect party member. 
Margulis is really wishing Loft hadn't quit, but Siberia reminds him that he was actually the one who kicked Loft out of the party, and he made a big show of it too. Margulis had totally forgotten all about that, but if he was the one who kicked Lost out, then he thinks it should be easy to get him back. All they have to do is ask, and he is sure Lost will rejoin the party immediately because after all, they have the famous Blades of Lightning. So no one would turn down an invitation to join the party, although Siberia is starting to question if she even wants to stay in the party at this point. By the next morning, Leela is finally done healing Armia, so she wakes up and thanks her for the healing, but Leela is just happy she could help. She asks if Armia feels well enough to eat, and since she does, Leela heads downstairs to get some food for her. But when heads downstairs to ask where the food is stored, she realizes Siberia and Margulis are gone, and she has no idea where they went. Margulis and Siberia are currently at the guild, and Margulis loudly proclaims that he is willing to graciously allow Lofts to return to his party. Once again, everyone stops what they are doing and stares in disbelief, and Lofts is most shocked of all. So he asks Margulis to repeat himself because there's no way he could have actually said something so dumb. Margulis repeats himself and Lost's ears weren't deceiving him, but he still doesn't know how to respond or such a ridiculous request. At the same time, Narsena and Amherst see what's going on, and Amherst explains the blonde guy is the leader of the party that kicked Lost out, and now he's trying to get him to come back by acting condescending. Lost obviously isn't amused with Margulis' speech. But before he can say anything, Margulis assumes he might be upset about the fact that they scammed him out of his pay while he was in their party, so Margulis apologizes and acts like it was an honest accident. He promises that Lofts will get a fair share this time around, plus, they could really use his help since the new healer Margulis hired isn't very useful in combat. Siberia thinks there's no way Lofts will actually agree to Margulis' request, but to her shock, Lofts actually thanks Margulis for the offer. Narsena refuses to let Lofts be stolen from her. So she runs out in front of him and starts yelling at Margulis, saying Lofts will never join his party again. Lofts touches her shoulder and tells Narsena that she doesn't need to worry about him leaving, after which he turns to Margulis and tells him that he was only saying thanks to be polite, but he has no interest in ever joining his party again. Margulis can't believe he got turned down, so he starts getting desperate and accuses Narsena of trying to use Lofts because she realizes he is actually really useful to have around. All Margulis's aggressive pointing is starting to get on Lost's nerves, so he grabs Margulis's hand and warns him that if he ever does anything to hurt Narsena, Lost will make sure his body will be mangled beyond recognition. Lost then turns to leave, and Narsena pauses for a second to rub it in Margulis's face one last time. After they've left, Margulis doesn't know what to do, but he still wants to defeat the Hydra, so he yells at Amherst to recommend him a new adventurer for his party preferably one who can handle fighting on the front lines alongside him, and Amherst really doesn't want to have to deal with him, but it looks like she won't have to because an adventurer walks out from the crowd, and this dude looks like he completed all the side quests before coming here. The mysterious man offers to join his party and asks if Margulis is satisfied with his level of strength. Margulis checks the guy out, and he definitely looks strong, but to make sure, he is going to have to test his sword skills. He draws his sword and charges at the man, but with a single swing of his sword, the man instantly disarms Margulis and makes him look stupid in front of the entire guild. After recovering from the embarrassment, Margulis says he will accept the man into his party. However, Siberia doesn't think it's a good idea to trust a man who wears a mask all the time, but Margulis says they have no choice because if they don't defeat that Hydra Lightning Blade's reputation as a strong party will sink like a rock. So he walks up to the guy and asks for his name, so the guy tells him his name is Shig. Back at Lost's and Narsena's inn, Narsena is checking herself in the mirror when she hears someone knocking on Lost's door. So she goes out to check who it is and finds Sheila at Lost's door. For some reason, her first thought is that Sheila is trying to make a move on Lost, but after thinking about it for a bit, she realizes that couldn't be possible. Once Lost finally opens the door, Sheila informs him that he has guests waiting for him downstairs, which is surprising, but Lost decides to go meet with them to see what this is about. Once he gets downstairs, Lost and Narsena meet with Armia and Leela. And while Armia feels bad for coming at him with such a brazen request, she asks Lost if he could come and help them just this once. Margulis still intends to go after that Hydra, and even hired a new warrior to help with the mission, but Leela doesn't think it's going to be enough to win. For one thing, Margulis is still too stubborn to buy an antidote potion because it costs money, and he's never going to realize how reckless he is being until someone ends up dying because of him. Armia knows it's too late to apologize now, but she acknowledges how strong Lost is, 
because if he hadn't cut off the Hydra's head last time the fought it, the entire party would have been wiped out. Lost still doesn't think he did all that much, but Leela points out that the party struggled to survive against a Hydra that had lost two heads already, so they would have been dead meat if it was in perfect condition. Loss asks what exactly Armia is asking him to do, so Armia stands up and says she wants Loss to fight with them, because she is sure they can defeat the Hydra if he is there as well. She is basically asking him to rejoin Lightning Blade, but Loss already had this conversation with Margulis earlier today, and his answer remains the same. Marcina wonders why Armia seems so determined to help Margulis out since this whole ordeal must be horrible for her to deal with. And yes, Armia believes Margulis has a lot of flaws, and I mean a lot, but even so, he's still her party member. Marcina becomes angry after hearing this because Loss was her party member as well, but she did absolutely nothing to support him when he was being mistreated. Armia begins crying and apologizes for what she did to Loss, but at the time, she was scared that if she didn't go along with what Margulis said, she would be kicked out of the party as well. She is a new adventurer, so she doesn't know any other parties to go to, but she now realizes that what she did was wrong, and that Margulis is wrong for the way he treated Lost. But even though she doesn't agree with Margulis' way of doing things, she still doesn't want him to get himself killed in an unwinnable battle. Lila tells Lost that Armia is serious about her apology and she has been agonizing over it for a long time. Lila tells Lost that Armia is serious about her apology and she has been agonizing over it for a long time. So while she understands Lofts can decline the request, she asks that he at least consider accepting Armia's apology. Lofts gets up and tells Armia that he holds no grudge against her, so he will accept her apology, but he still has no intention of returning to Lightning Blade. Armia is disappointed, but she accepts his answer and says she won't bother him about it anymore. Just then, Mary comes over and she has brought a whole feast to cheer Armia up since she looks like she hasn't been eating well. While Armia is eating, Lost talks with Leela and asks if there is any way for her to take Armia and leave Margulis' party, but if she could have done that, she wouldn't have come here in the first place. Lost knows how Margulis treats people, so he suggests that Leela should leave his party anyway, but Leela refuses to do that since she would be leaving Armia to fend for herself under the leadership of that idiot. The next day, Margulis finally introduces Leela to Shig since they will be fighting the Hydra again today, but she seems to recognize him from somewhere so she wants to have a word with him. She asks what he's doing here and why he is disguising himself, but Shig is still trying to pretend that he has never met Leela before, so he tries walking away, but as he does so, she notices the sword on his back which used to belong to a person named Ronaldo, so she accuses him of stealing it, but Shig denies it and says it was handed down to him as a gift, so he is no thief. He may have cleared his name of theft, but the fact that he admitted knowing Ronaldo lets Lyra know that he is indeed the same Shig she knew. However, she decides to keep his secret identity hidden since it seems important to him. Later on in the day, Loss and Arsena are heading into the labyrinth as they usually do, but he can't help but worry about Armia and the rest of Lightning Blade because he has no idea if they are truly ready for the battle or not. Down in the labyrinth, Lost is letting Arsena take on some of the mid-level monsters by herself and she has been doing great so far, but all the moving around made her really hungry so Loss suggests they should take a break and have lunch. Marcena is glad to hear that, so she brings out the food she packed, but all this seems a little too extravagant for just lunch. Marcena explains that Armia didn't eat much of the food Mary made for her yesterday, so this morning before they left, Mary gave the leftovers to Narsena and told her to eat it for lunch so it wouldn't go to waste. While they eat, Loss gives Narsena some lore about the Hydra, and tells her that its body is covered in tough muscles that make it difficult to pierce. It's also venomous and has got scales that deflect physical and magical attacks. That sounds really tough to fight, so Narsena wonders if Armia is going to be alright in a fight against a monster like that, but Loss says there's no need to worry. An antidote for the Hydra's venom was developed and is being sold in Marmot, so poisoning won't be a concern, but Narsena reminds him that Margulis still refused to buy it. Loss kind of forgot about that, and Lightning Blade is kind of screwed if they get poisoned, so they'll just have to rely on Lyra's detoxification spell instead. He can see that Marcena is getting worried about Armia and Lightning Blade, so he assures her that the party can handle themselves just fine without him. Margulis may be an idiot, but he is still a decent swordsman when he actually puts effort into preparing. And Siberia is quick on her feet, so she should be able to avoid most of the Hydra's attacks. In any case, it has nothing to do with Lost, and this is something Lightning Blade has to handle on its own. And they'll probably be fine. Loss gets up and says they should keep going, but Marcena tells him she's getting sick of exploring the same labyrinth over and over, so she wants to try something new, and it just so happens that there's a swamp nearby. 
so she wants to go there for no particular reason. And definitely not because she's worried about Armia. Meanwhile, in the swamp, Lightning Blade is battling the Hydra, and with his exceptional skills, C is able to severely wound the Hydra, and he could have taken it down just now, but he chose to hold back and returns to the ground. Margulis asks C why he didn't finish the Hydra off, and C has his reasons, but to convince Margulis, he tells him it would be much cooler if the party leader was the one who slayed the Hydra, and Margulis agrees, so he charges forward to attack it again. Lara wishes Margulis wouldn't rush into things from the front all the time, but Siberia says that's just how he is. Lyra is done healing her, so Siberia is able to return to battle as well, and from what Lyra can tell, Seed is the strongest person in the party, but it doesn't look like he has any intention of joining the fight again, so it's up to the others to finish off the Hydra. Still, his previous attacks left the Hydra weakened and slow, so as long as Siberia can successfully distract the Hydra long enough, Margulis's frontal assault strategy will actually work. Armia is also keeping the Hydra busy with her magic, so if things keep going like this, then the team will eventually win. But just when things were going their way, the Hydra launched a rock and knocked Armia to the ground. It then menacingly looms over her body, and Armia is so scared that the fear literally starts seeping out of her body. Monsters feed on the fear of humans, and normally you shouldn't be able to see fear like this, but it is visible because of an abnormally high amount of mana in the area. Mana concentrations of this level should only be possible in the labyrinth, but the Hydra is taking full advantage of it and begins to evolve. This is truly a frightening sight, and none of the others are capable of handling this on their own, so Seed decides to step in. He asks Lyra to take care of Armia, and tells Margulis that he has to retreat immediately, but Margulis refuses to back down since they've already done a lot of damage to the Hydra, so it shouldn't be that hard to finish it off before it transforms. He leaps up into the air and attempts to slash the Hydra's head off, but once his sword connects with the monster's head, it shatters and Margulis is left completely defenseless as the Hydra prepares to counterattack. However, before the Hydra could land a fatal blow, Lofs shows up and deflects its attack along with Narsina. The Hydra backs off momentarily and Seed thanks Lofs for his help, but he says we'll handle the things from here so if he wants Lofs to go check on Armia since she's hurt. Lyra has already begun healing Armia, but the damage she sustained is severe and wizards are resistant to magic, so Lyra's healing magic isn't very effective. Lost offers to do the healing instead, so Lyra lets him, but she doesn't see what good it would do since basic healing magic is still going to be ineffective in this case. However, to her surprise, Lost starts spam casting heal until Armia begins to recover. This is the most absurd thing she has seen all day, but Margulis and Siberia don't think there's anything strange about it since this is how Lost always use healing magic, so they thought it was common practice. Lyra explains that not only is it extremely difficult to overlay heal spells like that, but she has never heard of it improving the efficiency of a heal spell before. Thanks to Lost, Armia soon wakes up and she is really glad to see Lofs, so she thanks him for coming to help, but she soon passes out again. Lost has dealt with most of her injuries, so she just needs to sleep for a while to recover her strength. But just when Lofs thought his job was done, the Hydra screeches a battle cry which loosely translates to, Lofs, come at me bro, I want a rematch. Steam was going to kill it himself, but since it seems to be holding a grudge against Lost, he asks Lost if he wants to do it instead. Lost agrees to fight the Hydra, and since Lost is going, Narsena says she'll fight as well. Nothing Lost says will get her to change her mind, so he lets her fight by his side, but only under the condition that she must retreat instantly if she feels like she is in danger. Since it has been settled that Lost and Narsena will be fighting the Hydra, Seed tells the others not to get involved in the battle for their own safety. Narsena throws the first punch to disorient the Hydra, and Lost follows it up by slashing at one of the Hydra's heads. He also decides to join in, so he charges at the Hydra and uses his sword to slash off one of its heads. Margulis is amazed by this since Seed is a lot stronger than he had initially thought, but even if Seed is strong, he wonders how Seed's sword remained intact when his own shattered upon contact with the Hydra. Lara tells him that Seed is using a special magic sword, which is far more powerful than any regular weapon. But magic swords are extremely rare, so Margulis wonders who Sieg is and how he acquired such a sword. The fight goes on, and Narsina attempts to land another punch on the dragon's sternum, but in the process she loses her footing, so the Hydra is able to take advantage and knocks her out cold. Now it could just kill her, but instead, it stares straight at Lofs and communicates that it is sick of getting jumped, so it wants a fair one versus one, otherwise it's going to end Narsena right now. Siberia can't believe the Hydra is smart enough to not only communicate off vibes alone, but to also know how to take a hostage. Lost has no other choice if he wants to ensure Narsena's safety, so he asks Sieg and Lara not to interfere from now on. 
Lost then attacks the Hydra by himself, but before long he gets knocked down by the Hydra as well. That was pretty anticlimactic since C was expecting Lost to be more impressive, but if this is truly all Lost has to offer, he is prepared to take down the Hydra instead. However, as Lost is about to lose consciousness, he reaches out to Narsena in an attempt to protect her, and all of a sudden, energy begins flowing out of his body and he stands back up to face the Hydra. Something is clearly different about Lost, but before the Hydra can react, Lost dashes forward and slashes off all the Hydra's heads in one fluid motion. Once the Hydra has been defeated, Lost loses consciousness again and by the time he wakes up, Marcena is standing over him asking if he's alright. He says he's fine, but he's more concerned about Marcena's health since she took a direct hit from the Hydra. Narsena says she's perfectly fine, but only because Lara brought an antidote potion for emergencies, and that thing was expensive, so Lara says she will charge him for it later. That aside, she asks Loss what happened to him earlier, but Loss has no idea what she's talking about. Just then, Margulis interrupts and starts complimenting Loss on his strength and tries to convince him to rejoin his party. Loss cuts him off and says he's never going to rejoin Margulis' party, but Margulis keeps talking anyway. He says a lot of valuable magic stones were dropped from the Hydra and he is willing to split three ways with Lost if he joins them. But Lost finds it odd that Margulis only intends to split the reward three ways, so he asks what he means by that. Margulis says he's only going to split it for himself, Siberia, and Lost, so the other get nothing. Lara and C are new to the party so he couldn't care less about them and Armia gets scared and hurt so often that he thinks she is useless now and wants nothing to do with her. He and Siberia even consider selling her off as a slave just to get rid of her. And at this point, Lost has had enough, but before he can do anything, Marcina beats him to the punch and knocks Margulis to the ground. Margulis begins bitching and yells that it's against the guild's rules for adventurers to attack each other, so he's going to report Marcena to the guild and have her expelled from the guild. He asks if everyone saw what Marcena did, but strangely, everyone got hit with a sudden wave of blindness when Marcena hit Margulis. But what they did see was the fact that Margulis and Siberia were talking about selling Armia off as a slave, and there are laws against that here. So they are both guilty of attempted human trafficking. Steed couldn't possibly overlook such a heinous crime, so with his authority he says he is placing them under arrest. Back at the guild we find out that Steed is a direct adventurer of the royal family, and he had received reports that the security in this town was deteriorating due to the adventurers here. So he was sent out to investigate it, and as soon as he arrived, he met Margulis and Siberia. Lara asks him what will happen to those two, and according to the rules, not only are they automatically expelled from the guild, they will be charged with human trafficking which could lead to a lifetime of prison with forced labor in the best case for them. Margulis and Siberia start freaking out and begin pleading with Siv to spare them because they can't afford to spend the rest of their lives in prison. They sound so pathetic that Loss starts to pity them, so he asks Siv if he can talk to him outside for a second. Stig agrees and asks what Lost wants to talk about, so Lost explains that those two may not be the most upstanding people, but just like him, they once had dreams of living as adventurers. However, at some point their dream changed to become top adventurers, and that led them to become obsessed with fame and fortune. Lost's point is that Margulis and Siberia weren't always like this, so while most people would have given up on them by now, Lost still wants to give them another chance to live as good adventurers, so he asks Sieg to let them off with a warning this time. Sieg doesn't understand how Lost can be so forgiving, but since it's what he wants, he releases Margulis and Siberia. But he warns them that if he ever so much as hears a rumor about them causing trouble, they will never see the light of day again. Margulis and Siberia take the hint and immediately start running to get as far away from sea as possible, but once they are gone, Amherst asks if it is really okay to let those two off the hook so easily. Seed tells her that even if they expelled those two, it wouldn't make them better people, so he will be monitoring them to see if this has scared them straight or not. At the same time, Narsena apologizes to Loss because it was her that forced him to get involved and help Margulis, but Loss tells her it's alright. He may never be able to get over how Margulis and Siberia treated him back when he was a part of their party, but he feels a lot better now those two have left town, so he won't have to worry about them anymore. Later that day, Seed meets with Lyra in private to explain the real reason he came to this city. He was tasked with monitoring Marmot because there have been an unusually high number of monster evolutions taking place here, and there's definitely some foul play at work, so he needs to get to the bottom of it. And to do that, He's going to need Lyra's help, so he wants to form a party with her like before. Lyra isn't opposed to the idea, but she says she will only agree to it if Sieg allows Armia to join as well since Armia needs somewhere to go. Sieg says he's fine with it, and in fact, it works out great for him since more party members means he can expand his surveillance. And there's a particular adventure that he has become interested in. 
This was the end of episode 4. Subscribe to not miss the next part.